Hey everybody, this week let's take a look at my finished Mojo Tone 5F11 Vibralux amplifier. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, about a month, and I finally have my finished 5F11 Vibralux amplifier for you guys to take a look at. Uh, we're gonna move on to you know what it took to build out the amplifier here shortly. But first I wanna say, you know, it's been a month since I've put a video out and I'm glad to see that we're still seeing lots of uh, views on the channel. It's really happy to see that. I know there was a few people asking for this uh, part three as well. So I'm excited to see that. We also rolled over 200 subscribers and over a year of making videos. So thanks a lot. I'll remind you guys to subscribe down below and also hit that notifications button. This week we're on to part three of the 5F11 Vibralux build. Definitely recommend to go back and check out part two and part one if you're jumping into this series right now. I go over all the parts list and the cabinet build, uh, basically enough to take you up to here. Now there was one thing that I did in between part two and when I started building out the amplifier circuit, um, and I'm gonna go over that right now and we're gonna need a quick close up. So one thing that I decided to do after some thought process and also a couple comments on the part two video was to go back and paint my speaker baffle. Uh, this is something that I know I should have done in the first place and to be completely honest, I just cut corners. Um, I covered my speaker baffle just plain birch with the Oxblood uh, speaker cloth. It looked okay and I probably could have got away with it, but after a little while of having this cabinet sit in my living room and looking at it every day, I realized it didn't really have that vintage look. So I went back, I pulled the speaker cloth off and painted that baffle black and it really does give a good contrast and a vintage look for this cabinet. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. If you notice that the front of it looks a little bit different, it's because I took that step. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of that, but it's pretty straightforward. Pull the speaker cloth off, paint it black, and then put it all back together. A little time consuming, but definitely worth the effort. With that out of the way, let's talk about the circuit from Mojo Tone. So I'm gonna try to put in as much of my build as possible, but I think a whole video montage might not do it justice here. So I'm just gonna talk to each step of the build as I insert the video. So when you order from Mojo Tone, you're gonna get an envelope with details on your build. Obviously you're gonna get a bill of materials. I went over a lot of this in the parts build, but what you're really gonna look at is your schematic here. And more importantly, your wiring diagram here. So you can see this one's been used a little bit, obviously, because I just put this all together. But this is pretty much what you get from for directions from Mojo Tone. It is definitely a little bit lacking, but luckily for us, they provide a Tweed 5E3 build tutorial online, which I used quite a bit. Um, I know it's not the exact same amplifier, but it does give you a better idea of what you need to do for the step-by-step -step process in putting together a Mojo Tone amplifier. I'm not sure if this is limited to just like the Tweed style amplifiers, if the step-by-step -step process would be different if you're doing something say Blackface or a Marshall type one. I'm guessing it would probably be the same, but you know, in lieu of having, you know, uh, step one, step two, step three provided to you from Mojo Tone. Um, that video, and I'll link it below, is kind of the saving grace for the procedure in getting this, this build together. So the first thing that you wanna do when you're putting together your Mojo Tone amplifier is take all the hardware that you have that's going to fix to the chassis and screw that in and get that in place. So this would include all the sockets for your tubes, this would include any jacks, like your input jacks, your speaker output jacks. Um, you know, if you have a foot switch jack, you know, this all needs to be put into your chassis first. Uh, the potentiometers, I would say yes and no. You, you probably could, it might be a little bit easier soldering down the road if you left them for a little bit further, but you also wanna get your LED or your pilot lamp um, holder in there as well, and your fuse. So a couple things that I got hung up on when attaching that hardware to the chassis, uh, the clamps for the valve uh, sockets or the valves when they actually go in, the clamps on like the 6v6 tubes and the rectifier tube, um, I forgot to install those. So I just had to go back and reinstall them once I realized that they needed to be in. Um, definitely something that you could probably catch the first time around. 
Secondly, there's three grounding lugs that would be beneficial for you to put in place as soon as you start putting all that hardware on. I mounted mine to the sockets uh, for the 6v6 tubes and my rectifier tube. And this just gave me a spot to ground close to where the 120 volts coming in and also off my 6v6 tubes. Once you have all the hardware installed on the chassis, you're gonna to look to build out your board and that's where your wiring diagram comes in. So it should be pretty obvious on how to put these together from the wiring diagram. You don't need a step-by-step -step process of what to put in first. You can use kind of the same logic if you've ever built a, a pedal or anything where you want your uh, lowest sitting components to go in first just because it makes it a little bit easier to solder. I started with my resistors and then moved on to diodes and then capacitors. In some cases, you know, where everything was very similar size, I also just worked left to right, uh, making sure that I had all those connections in there. Now there's a lot of uh, jumper connections that you've got to trace. Um, I will say that the wiring diagrams provided by Mojo Tone don't give the cleanest trace of where it goes. So definitely follow it with your pencil because you'll see that some overlap other lines and uh, you don't want to accidentally you know, uh, solder something to the wrong spot. So after you have completed soldering all your components to your fiber board, the next step is actually going to be setting up the board for the offboard wiring. By that I mean it's any leads that go from your board to a component that is attached to the chassis. Um, in this case, you know, you can think about your board to a potentiometer, your board to an output jack, etc. Um, to do this, if you look at the 5e3 tutorial video posted by Mojo Tone, they suggest just anywhere where you need to go from a point on the board to somewhere on the chassis, cut a lead about four to five inches. I did this for my build and it seemed to be pretty true. Um, if you have four to five inches on the top or on the bottom, if you have you know, a lead coming off the bottom, that should get you to any spot on your chassis pretty easily. Um, I think I only had one instance and it was from a rightmost spot on my board to a potentiometer on the far left. I had to take that wire off and actually cut a longer one, but I had just about enough left over with the wire provided by Mojo Tone to be able to make that switch. So uh, a good thing there to know, um, you obviously can be a little bit more diligent if you want when doing your offboard wiring, but for the most part, uh, four to five inches should do you for most cases. After you get all the leads soldered onto your board for the offboard wiring, the next step that you're gonna want to do is attach the back plate to the wiring board. Uh, this is just to avoid any short outs between the components and the chassis. So Mojo Tone does provide you a back plate or a you know, blank piece of fiberboard to achieve this. What you need to do is find out where you can push a screw through the chassis, through the back plate, and cleanly through your wiring board without shorting anything out. So there is some pre-drilled holes in the chassis, uh, just with a little bit of movement around of your board and the way they've got it set up, it shouldn't be that hard to find. But it is a little bit of a task and I would just recommend that you take your time here because you don't want to short out anything on your wiring board when you're attaching that screw through the chassis through the back plate into the wiring board. So after you have finished drilling out the holes for attaching the back plate to the wiring board and the chassis, you're going to want to drop the back plate and wiring board in and attach it into the chassis. So it's a pretty easy process, the screws are provided. At this point, the only thing you need to worry about is making sure to fold up all those leads that uh, you've soldered on for the offboard wiring because your next step is going to be actually to attach those to each of the locations um, as noted in your wiring diagram. One thing I will say here before you go ahead and start soldering those four to five inch leads to the spots on the uh, components on the chassis, um, take a look at the components that are attached to the chassis and see if any of them have their own components soldered between them. So in this case, you know, this has three outputs. There's a resistor soldered into one of my output jacks. Um, there's a couple of ground spots here. Um, there's uh, a resistor to ground. There's capacitors between my volume and tone. Items like this you want to get in there first before you start soldering those wires from your schematic board. Uh, it's not 
completely necessary to do it this way, but you're going to find it a lot easier uh, just because, you know, once you start getting all these wires in here, it gets really cramped and you want to work with as much space as possible. And sometimes getting those resistors between, you know, two lugs on, say, uh, a potentiometer is a little bit harder when you have a, a bunch of wires around there that you don't want to burn with your soldering iron. So once you have your board wired completely into your chassis, um, there is one item that maybe I didn't go over, might be part of it, might be separate. Uh, I have some video of it, so I'll, I'll separate it out, and that is wiring in your power cable. Um, this is pretty easy. Uh, Mojo Tone will provide you with a power cable for your region. For me, it's a three-prong, 110-volt uh, input. Uh, it has three leads, a common, a ground, and a live. And essentially, all I had to do was strip that off. Uh, they give you a small uh, clip that will allow you to fix that into your enclosure, as well as a cable clip so when that cable runs down out of your enclosure, you can clamp it to the side so it'll avoid any strain and pulling on that solder joint once you get it in. Works pretty well, um, no complaints there, and you're following the same steps that you would with soldering any pieces of lead. Unfortunately, the next step I don't have any video of, but it's pretty straightforward. It was just putting the chassis into my finished cabinet. Uh, pretty simple, uh, when you buy the chassis, they give you two chassis screws with the locking nuts on the bottom. You're just going to drop those through the holes that you've drilled in your cabinet and then push the chassis back up. Now, if you have someone to help you here, it would be recommended. Uh, you know, this chassis does get a little bit heavy with the two transformers uh, attached to the side of it. Uh, if you don't, you can use, you know, an expander and, you know, keep it in place with that until you get those screws to hold it in place. I will say in the tutorial for Mojo Tone, they actually ask that you put the tubes in first before putting the chassis in the cabinet. I don't really understand this. It seems like a easy way to possibly break your tubes if you're moving it around. I did it opposite. I mean, maybe someone in the comments could explain why they might say this, but for me, if I've got a glass tube there, I want that to move as little as possible when it's unprotected. So I got my chassis in my cabinet first, and then I started putting in my tubes. So the first thing you wanna do before you know go ahead and you know put all your tubes in and turn the sucker on is start to check voltages. Um, what I did first, and this is explained again in the Mojo Tone tutorial, is you're going to put in your rectifier tube first. You don't need your speaker attached if you don't want. Um, and what you're going to do is plug it into the wall and then start testing your AC and DC voltages. Um, there's some main spots to check here. Uh, for the AC voltages, you're going to check the specific pins on your, on your tube. Um, these are all fed off the pilot light, so you should be able to see that. Uh, in most cases, you're going to see it to be about 2.9 volts AC in these cases. Um, on either side of your pilot light, you should see this because it is a 6 volt pilot light. Additionally, you can check your spots off your filter caps for high DC voltages. Uh, these are going to be somewhere around 4 to 500 volts, depending on what amplifier you have. Uh, what I would suggest here though, I noticed when I did mine, my voltages were around 500 volts, but my filter caps were only rated for 475. So I didn't keep this on for a long time. I just made sure I was getting a high DC voltage here and then shut it off. So once I had my DC voltages and AC voltages checking out, which they all did first time, uh, I went ahead and added my 6V6 tubes and my 12AX7 tubes. Um, there is the little cups that go on the 12AX7 tubes. I added those in as well. Uh, at this point, you need, need, need to plug in your speaker. Uh, that's because you need to load your amplifier before you turn it on, especially if you have something like the, uh, the speaker um, being grounded in the case of, of how that switch is, wor is working. Uh, you could really do some damage to your amplifier if you don't plug in your speaker should be pretty obvious, but if this is your first time, I definitely want to stress when you have your 6v6 tubes in, you need to plug in your speaker. Again, you want to check your voltages. So here what you're going to see is a little bit less DC voltages off those filter caps. You're actually going to see it spike and then roll off a little bit. That's because the 6v6s are going to be drawing from those filter caps um, as well. Uh, the DC or sorry, the AC voltages are going to stay pretty standard around the 2.9 3 volt AC area. And again, that's just because it's it's powering that uh, uh, pilot light and those uh, spots on each of your tubes. So unfortunately, 
Uh, I wasn't able to find anything on the Mojo Tone site to say what the correct voltages should be, but I did have some idea based on the 5E3 tutorial. I felt comfortable enough at that point that I could fire it up and just let it sit for a while. Uh, I could plug in my guitar and see if I got some noise. Uh, one thing I was looking for here, more than just getting the output from the guitar, was that none of my 6V6 tubes were red plating, so you should see a warm uh, orange glow from those tubes. You shouldn't see any deep red glows. If you do that, turn off your amp immediately, you've got something wrong. So luckily for me, my first attempt was good. I had uh, no issues. I had the nice warm orange glow from my tubes, no red plating. I was getting sound from all three inputs of the amplifier, so awesome, right? Well, not exactly. Uh, about a day later, after playing this for maybe a couple hours, I started to get some random cutouts of my speaker. Um, you know, I would get tons of volume, then not enough volume. So I knew something was up. I sent an email off to Mojo Tone Support, which they were great. They came back to me. Um, I first thought it might've been my filter cap, something was going on there. Um, they came back and said, it's, it's likely a cold solder joint. So I didn't really think of it at the time, but I guess it makes sense. You know, I just had started playing it. Uh, everything was probably soldered in there. Then once everything heated up, something let go. So uh, it wasn't a big issue to fix. I just pulled the back plate off I made sure that my filter caps dissipated so I didn't have any voltage on them. Very, very, uh, take very much caution in doing this um, just because you don't want to electrocute yourself or give yourself an electric shock for that matter. Um, and then I just went through point by point to make sure that I had connection. Uh, there was a few finicky ones. I added a little bit more solder and put everything back together and it was working and it's been working ever since. So uh, just a heads up for anybody out there, I guess this is a pretty common thing when you put one of these together that you know it's possible that after playing for a short period of time when that circuit does heat up, any of your cold solder joints could be uh, you know shown to you that may not have been there when you first turned it on. So at this point I had a working amplifier, I was very happy with it. The only thing left to do was to uh, go ahead and build out that amplifier badge that you see on there. I do have a little bit of video of that. It was a pretty simple process, to be honest. I, uh, I went to my local hardware store, picked up some sheet metal, same stuff they use when repairing automobiles. Uh, I cut out a small uh, rectangle from that with my jigsaw. I shined up the uh, sheet metal with uh, some sandpaper and steel wool. Also cleaned up all the rough edges from sawing it out and then use the same process that I do when creating graphics for my effects pedals to put my Punye icon on the front of it. So uh, once I got that on, I pressed it out, made sure there was no bubbles, and then hit it with some clear coat, and then used four screws from some old vintage tuners that I had lying around to attach it to the front of the amplifier. I really like how it turned out. I won't say it's the absolute best. It's not gonna look as good as a silk screen, of course, but unless somebody gets really up close, uh, they're not really gonna notice that it's just basically a sticker on a piece of old sheet metal. Um, yeah, very happy with it and very happy with the amplifier build altogether. So originally this was going to be a four part series where part four would be the demo of the amplifier. It's been a month since part two, so I thought best to add the demo into the end of this one. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is my Mojo Tone 5F11 Vibralux amplifier.
Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you guys liked the demo. I hope you uh, liked all the steps that I've taken to show you what goes into building one of these Mojo Tone kits. Uh, hopefully, you're not afraid to, to take it on yourself. It's really not that hard of a process. I just recommend that you take your time. So with that, I'll leave it here for this week. Maybe we'll get back into pedals or something different next time. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.